All right, today I'm going to talk to you about Christian Light Education Language Arts. Um, specifically, I'm going to be talking to you about Level 2 because that's the program we've been using all this year. We started using Christian Light Education in the middle of my oldest daughter's first grade year, and we loved it, so we continued with it and have been using it this year. Let's get started. I'm Jamie, and this is Simply Learning Together. I love sharing things about our homeschool, and I really love talking about curriculum. I love learning about it and just sharing it with others. So I'm so glad you're here. If this video is helpful to you and you enjoy it, please make sure and hit the like button, uh, leave a comment, let me know what you think, and also check out the description. There's a blog post link there that tells you all this information as well, so you can check that out there. Christian Line Education is published by a Christian Mennonite company. You can head to their website and you can click on their About button and it'll tell you about all of the things that they believe and the things that they practice. I am a Christian and although I do not practice some of the same things that they do in their company, those things have not affected our learning. I actually never even knew until somebody told me and then certain things clicked. For example, the images in the book, we couldn't really relate to them. What I mean by that is head coverings, the clothing, we just couldn't relate to it. And so we didn't exactly know what the answer was. However, I looked it up and we moved right along. So th that really has not affected us. The program is going to teach about God, obeying God, having good manners, having good character traits, being kind, all these things that I also like to teach my children. So it, it has been helpful in that way, but just know that it's in there. Be sure and check out their website so you can see exactly what they believe, what they practice, and how it might affect you as you choose whether or not to use this curriculum. The Christian Light Education Program is broken up into units. They are little booklets and they are called light units. One program, so one level comes with 10 units, at least the second grade level does. Now, I love this about the program because it allowed me to try it out before we even started. You can purchase one unit separately from the rest of it. So when I was interested in looking into a new language arts program, I went online, I purchased one unit, I believe it was like $3.50, and then I paid for shipping. That one unit came to me, we tried it in our homeschool, we loved it, and we kept getting the units after that. So when we started second grade, I bought all 10 units and we've been able to work through them throughout the year. The program also comes with a teacher's guide when you purchase it all together like that and they have optional materials as well. I will link the website here that you can see those materials. We have never used them in our homeschool. It's important to point out that the lessons are set up in a spiral review format, which means new topics are gonna be introduced, but then they will be continued to review later on. One lesson is going to introduce a new language skill and then it's going to review phonics and grammar throughout. And it's set, set up that way for every lesson. So you're learning something new and then you're reviewing something else. The next lesson, learning something new, reviewing other things. And I love that setup because it makes it harder to forget. So we're constantly reviewing the things that we learned this year and even last year, things are brought up. Starting in level two, the language arts program includes spelling, handwriting, and writing. For handwriting, it starts with manuscript, and when you get to booklet three, it starts introducing lines and curves and moves into cursive. Also starting in unit three, the writing lessons are incorporated in the booklets. So as we work through the lessons, it breaks down the writing so that we know exactly how to fit it in. I really love that because I don't have to plan anything extra. It's just broken down in the lesson for us. The writing there are multiple types of writing assignments, so she's getting a variety of practice in writing. I do want to point out that the lessons are very to the point. There is not any extra fluff. There is not beautiful color pictures. It is what some people might say cut and dry. I personally enjoy that because I can make it what I want it to be and I can be very flexible with it. I can take things out. I can easily add it in. I'm not trying to dig around a bunch of extra activities. I want to show you inside. Let's just take a look at one lesson that hasn't been done by us yet. Um, you're going to see they'll introduce a topic and give them a chance to practice. Here's just a few practice problems and then they're introducing some phonics. 
when you turn the page, there is review. And so all of these things she has learned and it's bringing it back to practice again. The penmanship section is very short. We actually don't usually do it because we use another handwriting program. If I want a short handwriting lesson, I do this instead. Then a lesson also includes the spelling practice. Sometimes it's a full page, sometimes it's half a page. It does also suggest that the student writes the spelling list once a day. We do not do that. We either write the list or we complete it in the book. So you can kind of choose what your student needs to do that best. And actually, it usually will tell you write section three spelling words on other paper. Um, and there's a checkbox to complete that. So we do one or the other. Each unit comes with two quizzes, a self check, and a test, and I wanna show you that here. So when you get to a quiz, it'll tell you right here um, to do a checklist to make sure you know, and then you'll give the quiz. Um, that is also when you would give a spelling test if you choose to do that. So the quizzes are found in the back of the book. And this is an example of a quiz. So it is just a front and back page, and you can see here is quiz number two. Now, at the end of the light unit, there is a self-check. The self-check is at the end, and you would complete this before a test. It looks exactly how the test might look and is about the same length. Now, I can pull out a, um, a different light unit to show you that the test is in the middle of the book. So you would just take this out before you begin. And then at the end of it, you could give the test. And you can see it's set up just like their lessons. So it's nothing surprising there. At the end of the light units, there is also some extra activities that you could do. And I've never actually done them. I've never actually even looked at them. Here's an example of some of the pictures that you might see in the lessons. We're gonna take a look at the teacher guide book and I'm actually gonna show you the section of the light unit that we just went over, just so you can kind of see that match there. The lesson is broken down. It's gonna tell you the objections and how you might want to prepare. It's also gonna tell you if you should write something on your board and it wants you to begin every lesson with review. And from personal experience, I'm just gonna tell you, we do not do any of that. We just skip right to the lesson. It will give you explanations for each section. And if there is some sort of script, like in this review section, it tells you exactly what you need to say. Um, one thing I really do like about the teacher's guide is that the answer keys are right next to the section. So you're not having to flip back and forth to the back. Here you can see the spelling section and it gives you the list of the words here. Then it moves on to lesson two. When you get to a quiz and a spelling test, it does 10 of the words and it tells you the word and gives you a sentence to go with the test. And just an example, love. God's greatest commandment says, love the Lord thy God. So here's an example of when they would put the Christian beliefs in the lessons and tests. When I first received the teacher's guide, it was actually very overwhelming. It felt like a lot of information in one place. But if you read through these different sections, it tells you about how the lessons are set up and how to best use this guide. And so I'm just kind of flipping through so that you can see what that looks like. In the back, there is also helpful information for you. The back includes a section with some phonics rules here as well as a breakdown of their spelling words and penmanship. Here is their scope and sequence, an index, all the spelling words broken down by section. Here is a section about teaching creative writing. It looks like these are alternate spelling lists and spelling words. This would be a good thing to print out and maybe laminate for your child. 
and these are alternate tests for the light unit. Um, I would think that you would need this. Let's say in your test, you felt like you needed a little bit extra practice based on the grade that your child got. So you could review some more and give another test, um, or you could use it for extra practice as well. I've never actually used an alternate test, but they are here. And that is it for the teacher's guide. As you can see, the lessons are not colorful and beautiful, um, filled with all kinds of things. It's very to the point. I enjoy this because I can be very flexible with it. If I want her to work independently, I can just sit her down and she can start working in the review section and I can jump in later for the new stuff if I need to. Um, I can grab a section and turn it into some hands-on game where we're moving around the room if I want. Because it's just so simple, I can jump in and adjust and change as I want to. I will say, and this is me being completely honest, if you complete this program, everything in the lesson, day after day, week after week, month after month, exactly as it says, it's going to get boring. I don't think there's a nicer way to put that. There's not much excitement to it. So you have to be willing to either kind of add your own flair or one of the things we've also done is we will complete a light unit and then we might step away and do a novel unit together or something like that. So it's kind of just part of our language arts program. It's definitely something to consider if you don't want to do anything out of the box, if you want to follow it exactly as it's written, then you might think about looking at something different. So the question is, do we continue using this program? I'll be honest, I have not quite decided yet. I really like the way that it's set up, but I'm also interested in just kind of reading some more books with my kids, uh, doing something a little more fun. It does get to the point where it feels a little bit boring. I'm currently deciding, do I want to supplement it with something else or do I want to try something new? And so I think that's important to mention. We've been using this program for a year and a half. I do not say it's bad. I do recommend it. It's a fantastic program, but every once in a while, something new and refreshing feels right. Okay, so let's just break it down real easy and look at pros and cons. I have a list here that I want to share with you and it's also on the blog post, but let's talk about pros of this program. It's inexpensive to try. Like I said in the beginning of the video, if you want to try a light unit for just a few bucks, you can try it out and see if it's the right fit for you. This program is easy to follow. The lessons are set up in the same pattern, so it's nothing surprising. The program includes spelling, handwriting, and creative writing in this second grade level. You can be flexible with this because of the way it's set up. You can take out or add in anything that you'd like if that's something that interests you. The work can be completed independently depending on your child. Um, and it does incorporate Christian values, which I do love. Some cons, it's cut and dry. It's what some might say boring at times. It does not have hands-on activities. Now, the extra activities at the end of the book might provide, you know, a craft or something that you can do. But like I said, you know, by the time we get through the lesson, I'm, I'm not interested in the extra activities. Also, it is not going to incorporate classic literature, fine arts, not in this level two. So if that's something that you are wanting to incorporate in your language arts program, it's not in this book in particular. You know, looking at all of this and what it has and some of the things that are missing, I think this is just proof that not one curriculum is always the right choice. The thing that's great about this is because it comes in little pieces like this, you can always supplement it with something you do love, or you can just pick and choose how you want to use the units individually. Or if you want to just go big and get all of them at once and fit them in as you please, you can do that as well. Just remember, don't let the curriculum rule you you get to make the curriculum work for your family. So no matter what you choose or what you decide, take a look at it and find a way to make it fit just right for your family.